Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today folks, about six or seven months ago now, I demoed a pedal by Frederick Effects here in the UK called the Accomplished Badger. A really cool, uniquely designed two-stage preamp boost gain pedal, and it really impressed me. Now today I've got this to show you. This is the new and improved version two of that design. Now at its heart, the circuit is pretty much the same. You get an op amp gain stage and a new old stock germanium transistor gain stage. To my ears, the op amp has a slightly more gristly breakup to it. The transistor is a little more warm and rounded, but two very nice different flavors of gain on those two knobs. But where the fun really happens with this pedal is using the op amp to slam the signal harder into the transistor, causing it to overload and misbehave somewhat. So the interactivity between the two gains is key to getting the most out of this pedal. Now over the version one there's three main improvements, four if you include the new graphics. This little fella is now reading Lady Chatterley's Badger, which is nice. The first is it still only wants a 9 volt input, but it now has a charge pump to up that internally to 18 volts. So it's always running at a higher voltage than the version one. This just gives it a little bit more clean headroom. You can now use it as a sparkly clean always on buffer should you want to. It just sort of widens the gain range the pedal operates within. The second is there's now an audio grade triad transformer on the output of the circuit. And this just adds a little bit of subtle coloration and compression and harmonic saturation to the whole circuit. And it just makes it a little bit more musical to use. And of course, the more you push the levels within the pedal, the more it will saturate the core of that transformer. Now, the third improvement is three small dip switches on the circuit board. And I'm gonna talk a lot more about what these do later on in the video, but essentially the first one doubles the gain of the op amp stage and the other two in insert some clipping diodes into the circuit to make it act a little bit more like an overdrive. But more on that later. First and foremost then, let's plug this pedal in, see what the two different gain stages sound like independently, and then what happens when we cascade them together. Okie doke then, so the pedal's now set up over here. Ignore the paper over the LED, it's just because it's super bright and was destroying the camera shot, so pretend that's not there. Now today I'm going to be using my Gibson SG into a Marshall JTM45 clone. And with the pedal set as it is currently, it's doing the clean unity buffer type effect. So what I'm gonna do is show you what the guitar sounds like with the pedal bypassed, then kick on the accomplished badger and let you hear what that buffering effect does. So when I engage the pedal, listen out for a touch of extra brightness that appears up top. <laughs> So just a touch more clarity overall, a little bit of warmth and fatness in the low end, that's probably the new output transformer working its magic. And overall, it seems to be shelving off a touch of low end, which into a Marshall JTM45 is no bad thing at all. So let's stick with the op amp gain then. I'm now gonna turn that up and let the actual op amp overload itself and distort to show you that lovely gritty breakup I was telling you about earlier. <laughs>
So it's really grainy in how it distorts, but it's really, really lovely. And with the gain at the top of its range there, digging into the guitar on the low E string, it's just starting to sag a little bit, which is really fun to play around with. So now let's turn down the op amp gain control to about 10 o'clock there. And I'm now going to up the germanium transistor gain. Now, as I said at the start of the video, this is a little bit lower in gain. It's a bit warmer and rounder, but especially if you like fuzz pedals, it does sound and feel under the fingers like a really beautiful low gain fuzz pedal. <laughs> So it cleans up amazingly well with your guitar's volume control, as you would expect from a transistor stage in a pedal. And with the op amp gain at what's that, about 10 o'clock there, it's just starting to kind of sag and misbehave when you really hit the guitar hard. So what I'm gonna do now is just back the transistor gain down a little bit. And I should say that noise there, it's not a fault with the pedal, it's not a dirty pot. We're rebiasing a transistor there, and that's the noise it makes when that happens. So that is completely normal. So I'm gonna back that down to about one o'clock there and start to bump up the op amp gain to push the signal harder and harder into that transistor. And as you'll hear, the more we push it, the more it starts to overload it and just sound absolutely wild. So this can take it from everything from a slightly kind of saggy fuzz booster thing into complete sort of synth territory when you hit the guitar hard and it's maxed out it completely cuts out for a few seconds that's a lot of fun so let's see how wild we can take it <laughs>
you can make it go absolutely haywire to the point it just stops working. But as I said at the start of the video, balancing out those two gain controls is key to the really fun elements of this pedal. And I think my favourite setting is with both gains at about one o'clock, because you can then back off in your picking dynamics and make it a little bit gritty but fairly clean. And then when you dig in, you can make it sag, but only when you want to. I love that. So it's this sort of effect here. So it is really, really fun doing that. You can use it very creatively, and it does have that kind of spluttery, gated, sort of Jack White type sound to it. Absolutely amazing. So that's pretty much what the surface level features of this pedal can do, balancing out the two gain controls and using your guitar's volume to kind of control the beast of the pedal that this is. But as I said at the start, there are three dip switches on the circuit board inside. So let's flip the pedal over, get the screwdriver out and see what fun we can have messing about with those. Right then, so I've just set the op amp gain to about 11 o'clock and the germanium gain to about three o'clock. So there's a good amount of gain happening with the pedal set just as it is. So I've got my magic screwdriver here and I'm now going to bump up the first of the three dip switches. So switch number one doubles the gain of the op amp section of the pedal. So by putting that switch up it should sound like we've turned that op amp gain knob up a little bit. It's pushing the signal harder into the transistor, creating more gain and probably causing it to sag and fart a little bit. <laughs> which is exactly what's happening. Now I'm gonna leave that switch up because we're now going to introduce switches two and three, and I want to give what those switches do a good healthy amount of level. So switch number two here introduces a soft clipping diode. So this should kind of gently roll off some of those slightly harsher edges that are coming out. It might clean everything up a bit, but probably make it sound a little bit more like an overdrive pedal because most overdrives typically use soft clipping diodes. <laughs> Now it's really weird because we're getting kind of less gain. I, I got a feeling that clipping diode is before the transistor because it seems to be kind of chopping things off before it really drives the transistor nuts. But it definitely changes the feel under the fingers. It feels more like an overdrive pedal. I really can't explain it any better than that, but it definitely changes the feel of the pedal. Now, if I pop down switch number two, and pop up switch number three, that introduces the second diode, which is a hard clipping diode. And this is what you more typically find in things like distortion pedals. It gives quite a sort of abrasive, harsh, metally edge to things. So we might find this now sounds a little bit more like a classic distortion. <laughs> is exactly what has happened. So it gives a pedal a completely different voice. Now, as a sort of party piece, I'm now going to engage both the soft 
and the hard die. So this is about as kind of as many gain stages as you can get in this pedal. You've got an op amp, a soft clipping diode, a hard clipping diode, and a transistor all going off at the same time. So this is kind of as extreme and complex as you can make the sound. <laughs> some really dense complex sounds at the end there and that's of course without adjusting the knobs on the front you can balance it all out for even more tones. So the accomplished badge of version 2 then can be whatever pedal you want it to be. It can be a unity buffer, a clean boost, a dirty boost, an overdrive, a distortion, a fuzz, an explosive synth machine and everything in between. And at all settings you can completely control the breakup and saturation of the pedal just by riding your guitar's volume knob. So you can set it pretty extreme and then decide exactly how out there you want it to be at any point in time just by using your guitar's volume control. So it's really interactive, really fun to use, and I think at pretty much all settings today sounded absolutely phenomenal. But please do comment underneath, folks. Let me know what you thought of the accomplished Badger version two today. I love chatting nerdy guitar stuff with you folks. And please do head over to the Frederick Effects website and check this out if you liked what you heard today. They're pretty affordably priced, and uh, yeah, I think just sound absolutely amazing. So thank you ever so much for watching folks. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you. Please do carry on subscribing. I know I always say it, but it makes a huge difference when you do that. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.